Hi. Hello everyone. Jody and I are here to give you an update on the vision, leadership and legal structure of Restore as a Church. We're doing this as we're proposing to introduce some changes at our AGM in October that reflect how we've grown as a church over the last few years and the adjustments that need to be made to reflect this in our church's constitution. The vision of Restore can be summed up using three words. Everyone, every day, everywhere. Everyone. We believe that every person is uniquely made in the image of God and is deserving of being embraced, valued and honoured. Every day. We believe that true discipleship is a wholehearted and whole life commitment to follow Jesus and so is an everyday living out of his values. Everywhere. We believe that Jesus came to share God's love everywhere and to establish more of the life of heaven here on earth. He started with those most in need and worked out from there and we seek to do the same. We've put these elements together into one sentence to summarise our vision. We welcome everyone to walk with Jesus every day and to see restoration everywhere. The mission of Restore is taken from Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 4, which Jesus quoted to define his ministry in Luke chapter 4 and can be summed up using three words, reconcile, restore and rebuild. Reconcile, to see as many people as possible from every walk of life, encounter God's love and goodness and to have the opportunity to be reconciled in relationship with him. Restore, to enable people to find healing for physical, emotional or spiritual pain and to grow into living out their God-given design and rebuild to positively contribute into the lives of others, living an outward focused and generous life and so bringing community transformation. As a church, our name comes from verse four of Isaiah 61. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated they will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. We achieve our mission as Restore by focusing on three core activities. Connecting, contributing and celebrating. Connecting. We encourage everyone to be part of a small group, which provides a place of belonging, shared life and spiritual growth. Contributing. We believe that everyone has God-given gifts and we grow most when we use these to serve others. Each of our congregations has the vision to reach its local community and we encourage everyone to get involved in this mission. Celebrating. We gather both in individual congregations and also as a whole church to celebrate all that God is doing in and through us and for vision and worship. The very last words that Jesus spoke to his first followers are recorded in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. These ordinary everyday people empowered by God's Spirit became part of a movement that went on to change the world. As Restore, we, just like them, ordinary everyday people, pray that we may be part of a similar movement today, starting first with our local community, our Jerusalem, and crossing over geographic, cultural and socio-economic barriers to impact our region, our equivalents of Judea and Samaria, and ultimately playing our part in helping to change the whole earth. Every charity must have a governing document or constitution that is a legal document that works as a rule book. It covers things such as the charitable purposes of the organisation, what activities it can do in carrying out its purposes, who runs it, who can be a member, who can be a trustee, and how these are appointed. The major change for Restore over the last few years is that we've grown from being one church meeting in one location to now being a number of congregations meeting in different locations. Although churches with multiple congregations are not unusual these days, there are a number of different ways they can be structured. On the left are different types of multi-site churches, that is one church that operates in a number of locations. And on the right are multi-church structures, that is where multiple churches partner or collaborate to fulfil a common mission. From a governance perspective, the models to the left are highly centralised, 
whereas the more you move to the right, the more decentralised they become. As Restore, the structure that best fits who we are is the Federation Church model. That is, we're one church with the same vision, values and heart, but we give each Restore congregation the freedom to express who we are in a way that is appropriate for them and the community within which they meet. We often refer to Restore as being like a family where all the children share the same DNA, our vision and values, but where every child is unique in how they express that DNA. The leadership structure of Restore needs to reflect us being one church meeting in several locations and ensure unity of vision and values, representation, transparency and accountability. For this, we are creating a leadership structure for Restore consisting of four different teams, each with their own unique roles to play within leading. Firstly, we have the Restore Family Eldership Team, the most senior level of leadership who are the custodians of the vision, mission, values and doctrine of Restore and are appointed following a nomination process from members across the whole of the Restore Church family. Secondly, each Restore congregation has its own leadership team, which represents the equivalent of a local eldership, with the responsibility for implementing the vision of Restore in their own context, as well as providing pastoral care. This team is appointed through a nomination process from members of that Restore congregation. Thirdly, we have a Restore Board of Trustees who are appointed to oversee our church and charities compliance to the legal and financial statutes required by UK charity law. From a biblical perspective, the trustee role is akin to those appointed in Acts chapter 6 with a key aim of supporting the Restore eldership team by covering these practical tasks in a God-honouring way. The Restore Trustees are appointed from nominations that come from the Eldership Team, Congregation Leadership Teams and the current Board of Trustees. Finally, we have a Restore Executive Staff Team, which is a senior staff team appointed to lead the effective day-to-day -day implementation of our vision, mission and activities. This team, for example, has responsibility for the recruitment process, supervision and development of Restore staff members. The Restore Executive Staff Team is comprised of the Senior Leader, the Head of Operations and Selective Representatives from the Staff Team. At least twice a year, all four leadership teams will meet together as the Restore Leadership Forum, providing a place to gather for worship and prayer, as well as for communication, input and consultation. In addition, every year Restore is legally required to hold an annual general meeting, where representatives from the leadership present a review of the previous year and plans for the future and are available for questions from members. The AGM also provides an opportunity for members to vote on such matters as receiving the annual accounts and approving the appointment of new trustees or elders. For any charitable legal structure to operate, there is a requirement to define membership. Those people who are able to participate in certain activities and processes and to vote at the AGM. After much reflection and consultation with a range of people across the church, we're proposing to define the membership of Restore in as wide and inclusive way as possible to reflect our heart and values. The updated constitution therefore defines a member as anyone over the age of 16 who has been part of Restore for a minimum of 12 months. By this we mean anyone regularly attending a Restore service and or a small group at least once a month. Thanks for watching this. I know it was a lot of information to take in, but I hope it was helpful to hear it all together. When you're ready, can I encourage you to watch the other two videos, one about the process for adopting the new constitution and another about our wider relationships as a church. I assure you they are far shorter than this one. Thanks for watching and see you soon.